So let's look at another problem here. Let's consider that you've got a disk here. So we got a disk, and let's say the mass of the disk, I'm going to call it big M, mass of the disk is 2.31 kilograms, and the radius of the disk is going to be 7.75 centimeters. And I've got a string wrapped around the disk, and it's hanging towards a hanging mass right there. Okay. So now we have a hanging mass. Let's say the hanging mass is 125 grams. Okay. And let's say that initially the hanging mass is at an initial height of 1.25 meters. Okay. Off the ground. Now, this disk has is is has an axle through the middle of it so it's free to rotate around there without friction and so what happens is that that i let go of this gravity pulls down on this the string starts unwinding that thing spinning and so what happens is as this thing unwinds this mass comes down so i want to know two things here I want to know what's the final velocity when it got to the bottom and how long did it take to get to the bottom? Okay, so so what do we do? Okay, well we think about it and we say well we got forces involved so let's consider free body diagram. Okay, so free body diagram. We've got this mass right here. Okay, we got mg pulling down. We got tension pulling up right there. We've got this thing. We've got tension pulling down right there. Things start spinning. Now we can do this using torques, but I haven't really talked about torques much yet. But you stop and you realize, oh, wait, the only force that's acting on this externally is the weight of that hanging mass. So that's gravity. Gravity is a conservative force. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means we can use conservation of energy. So the initial kinetic plus initial potential equals the final kinetic plus final potential. So initially, nothing's moving. So the initial kinetic energy is zero, and this is the thing that's going down, so it's, it's final potential energy is zero, the initial potential energy is mgh. So we have the mgh, final is zero. Now, when it reaches the bottom, two things are happening. It's moving, and the other thing is rotating. So that means the kinetic energy has to be the kinetic energy of both things happening. Okay, so we look at that and we say, okay, so I is the eye of a disc. How do you know the eye of a disc? Well, you look it up. Okay, so it's one half m r squared. Okay. Well, omega and v are related to each other. Remember, v equals r omega. So we could say that omega is V over R because our R up here uh, on on the uh, our R up here on the uh, uh, radius of the disk is going to be uh, is going to be giving us the V. We remember that from our our uh, previous chapter, and so uh, now all we got to do is plug these. Things in. 
So MGH equals one half MV squared plus one half times one half MR squared uh, V squared over R squared. So the R squareds cancel. So MGH equals one half MV squared plus one fourth big MV squared. So V uh, is going to be equal to the square root of MGH divided by one half M plus one fourth big M. Okay, and we all know all those numbers in there. Okay, so we actually have all those numbers, and so that means if we plug in the numbers that we've got, we come up with 1.55 meters per second. Okay, so starts up here, string wrapped around, okay, and it, it's, this is a, an initial height of 1.25 meters. And then what has happened is it's down here and it's moving downwards at 1.55 meters per second. Up here, the velocity was zero, so the initial velocity was zero. So the final velocity is 1.55 meters per second. And so I want to know how long does this take. Now, there's an easy way and a hard way of solving the problem. The hard way is going back and trying to use Newton's laws to do this. The easy way to do this is to say, oh, what's the initial velocity? Zero. What's the final velocity? Right here. Well, it turns out the velocity is changing linearly, and so it's gradually increasing velocity here because we have constant tension, we have constant, we have a uh, uh, constant force on it, so the force is constant, and, and that means that the acceleration is going to be constant. If the acceleration is constant, that V equals V naught plus AT, it's constant acceleration, so you know the average velocity. Remember, this is, it looks like this, right? You know, V uh, versus T. So the average velocity is going to be basically just the average, V plus V naught over 2. So the average velocity is going to be equal to 1.55 meters per second plus zero over two. Okay, and so that comes out to be uh, uh, 0.775 meters per second. So how does that help? Well, we know that it went 1.25 meters and we know the average velocity uh, 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 there, okay, so we know what the average velocity was, so that means that, that, uh, um, so the average velocity, uh, 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 one point, um, so the average velocity here, uh, Point seven seven five meters per second. So the time is just going to be the distance divided by the average velocity, and so that comes out to be one point six one seconds. So that's the easy way of solving this problem, and I'm all for solving things the easy way.